In this video, I'm going to show you how to compose inspirational music like this. Step one, chord progression. For a corporate piece of music, we want to think less about film chord progressions and more about pop progressions. One of the classics is going to be a 1-6-4-5 progression in a major key. For this piece, I went with C major. Notice how for the first half of the progression, I use a bass line which is falling stepwise down the C major scale. As the F major transitions into the G major chord, I use a quick C over E to give some interest to the transition. The only time this chord progression changes is in the pre-chorus, which goes 3-4-6-5 and sounds like this. Step two, arpeggios and ostinatos. Arpeggios and ostinatos are arguably the crucial element to this type of music. I make use of two different ostinatos and one arpeggio in the piece. The first ostinato, which you hear repeated throughout the entirety, is the piano ostinato. I have a very simple pattern using only the root and the fifth. It is crucial to keep this ostinato simple so it can work with any chord and leaves room for the rest of the music. The arpeggio in this piece is using a cheesy ARP preset from a synth. You know those ARP presets that come with the synths you buy that you never use? Well, now's the time to put those things into action. For this piece, I chose a sound which hovers on a C pedal note throughout the piece. I do use volume automation to bring the ARP in and out depending on whether or not I need it. The final ostinato, which is used in this piece, is a string ostinato. This string ostinato, unlike the piano ostinato, does change notes depending on the chord. It also grows during the pre-chorus to create more energy and build up a sense of tension that releases into the chorus. Step three, strings. The next step is to layer the chords with some cinematic elements. For this piece, I'm using sustained strings and choir. The choir is playing an articulation where they are essentially humming, so they are very quiet and can't really be heard, but more so felt. In order to increase the cinematic sound, I have three more cinematic elements to fill out the atmosphere of the piece. The first is a very soft, sustained pedal note playing a high-pitched string sound to fill out the atmosphere on the high end. The second is the use of chimes for key transitions. They sound like this. The third is using the piano sound, which is frozen and then reversed to give a classic transition sound that repeats every eight bars. Step four, percussion and bass. The bass that I use in this piece is an electric guitar. It follows the bass line of the chords playing chugging eighth notes. I have two percussion elements. The first is a filtered kick drum sound from a progressive house EDM pack. This is meant to give the piece a very modern feel as opposed to an organic kick drum. The second is a more organic drum sound playing in the chorus using a very simple snare and hi-hat pattern. It's almost so simple that it feels lifeless and robotic, but that's kind of the point with this type of music. It's meant to be as familiar sounding as possible because of the fact that it's gonna be in the background. We don't really want any interest in the percussion that's going to really stand out and draw in the viewer of the video's attention. Step five, arrangement. 
The final note I would like to make are some points regarding the arrangement. The piece should be a very standard pop song arrangement. I have gone with an 8-bar intro, a 16-bar verse, an 8-bar pre-chorus, and a 16-bar chorus, which repeats. Following a songwriting philosophy, I start with only a few elements and add more as the piece grows. The one caveat I would point out here is that we need to remember that this is not meant for listening on its own. This is meant to be played in the background of some cheesy corporate video. Thus, unfortunately, the chorus shouldn't be massive or notably bigger than the rest of the piece. Rather, it should just feel big enough to feel positive and like a satisfying release to any tension that has been building throughout the piece. But it should not be overwhelming for the viewer of the video, so they are focusing on the music instead of the video itself. The people making the video, for corporate reasons, do not want the music to be the main point of the video, they just want it to give an emotion, they do not want it to be the main focal point. The second half of the piece is an exact repeat of the first. There's no need to add anything new. We want the feeling of inspiration to persist, but there's no reason other than fulfilling my own ego to add anything new to the third minute of the music. At that point, the viewer's attention should be fully focused on the video and adding new musical elements is just going to draw their attention away from what's being said in the video. With all of that being said, here is the final piece. If you have any questions or comments, please do leave them down in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed the video and found something interesting or that you learned something new. That is it for now. I will catch you all next time. Take care.